the Russian army rising. The church is the breathing grounds for raising godly men and women who are willing to apply kingdom principles and values to bring transformation to their respective societies. We need to have a national focus. We don't have to lose this ambition or else we work against the Great Commission. They are equipped in righteousness. Unless our righteousness exceeds those who just know ABC and surprise others to do, but they don't do unless we see that we pray for god to raise right ministers in our nations we pray for god to raise right tax collectors we pray for god to raise right security agents they are bold and fearless standing your ground when the battle has been heated to such an extent that everyone is running away but we don't quit for we know no defeat the agenda to possess the nations. Welcome to an equipping center of the word and prayer on Pentecost hour. Stay tuned in. I want to bless the name of the living God for this opportunity to be here and to be the speaker this morning. It is more blessed to give than to receive. So when you have the opportunity to be the speaker, you are more blessed than those who are receiving. And so when you receive, you also have to pass it on so that you also be a blessing. And so please open your spirits to receive and then pass it on. Make sure that you don't waste any time by coming to warm these chairs, but open your spirit to receive what the Almighty God has for us this morning. I'll speak on the topic, Oasis of Salvation. Oasis of salvation. Proverbs 18 verse 10 says the name of the Lord is a fortified tower. The righteous run into it and are saved. The righteous run into it and are saved. That is Proverbs 18 10. I'll take my second test from Ecclesiastes 3, verse 11. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 11. He has made everything beautiful in his time. He has also set eternity in human hearts. Yet, no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to the end. I will be dealing with these two scriptures um, in this presentation. John Barker, a bishop of the Church of England and a theologian, believes that one area of religion that needs to be studied is what he calls compounds of limitation. Compounds of limitation. He defines compounds of limitation as aspects of life's experience which imposes on humans certain limitations of intransigent nature. Some limitations that are inflexible. They are inflexible in their nature. They don't make any concession for anyone or for any generation. John Barker thinks that there are some limitations that human beings find themselves. He identifies all this in one word suffering and he lists them as one pain physical emotional and spiritual torture pain he thinks that pain is a limitation that we find it very difficult to get out of and then he goes for the second one. The uncertainty of the future. The uncertainty of the future. This one breeds anxiety and sometimes great fear. And sometimes because of the fear of the future, people tend to have suicidal tendencies. And other times, some people die even before they get to that future. 
The third one, he lists as the irretrievable and sometimes the irreparable nature of the past. The irretrievable, the irreparable, and sometimes the irrecoverable nature of the past. The had I known stories. The had I known stories. To him, this is also a limitation. Then, he goes for the fourth one. The random nature of natural disasters. It is random because it picks and chooses. Like earthquakes, floods, fierce winds like tornadoes and tsunamis, wildfires, pestilence like Ebola and coronavirus. During those times of the lockdowns, we were asked to stay at home. Stay indoors. But when it was an earthquake or earth trauma, they would have instructed us to evacuate buildings. Sometimes, people evacuate towns and cities. And then, he comes to the number five. Our old age enemy, death. Death is and it will be. Death is an enemy. It leaves in its wake devastating effects. It takes parents away. It takes guidance away. And it leaves students wondering whether they can complete their school. Yet, Scripture says that death is the last enemy that God will destroy. Now, what that means is that death has a plan in God's agenda. If it doesn't fit in his agenda, it wouldn't be the last that he would destroy. Even though Scripture identifies death as an enemy, it doesn't go to anybody's home to do the person good. Not at all. Death is a compound. One of the compounds of limitation. These limitations are uncompromising. They are inflexible. I said they don't make any concession for you because you are a lady or you are a gentleman. It doesn't matter the generation that you have arrived on this earth. These compounds of limitation are there for all of us. So John Baca thinks that religion is a root finding activity out of these compounds of limitation. And I, I think I will agree with him to some extent. See, suffering is a major predicament that faces humankind. Suffering. Suffering is not abstract. Suffering is not academic. Suffering is real. It is both subjective and objective. Subjective because individuals suffer. Objective because we see people suffer. So sometimes you see lunatics, mad people around. Sometimes you go to the hospital, you see people suffering. And that is objective because you see it. It is subjective because sometimes when you are suffering and you don't say it, people don't know that you are going through hard times. But suffering is real. And people want to find ways and means of escape of these compounds of limitation. The scripture teaches in Romans 5.12 that suffering has come as a result of sin through the fall of man. Sin entered the world through the fall. And evil accompanied it. And then evil bred what we call suffering. So we are saying that the root of this suffering is evil. And there are categories of evil. Physical evil. 
this natural disasters, like I've said, accidents, these are physical evil. Things that really happen to human beings, and you see that this is evil, but it has happened. Moral and personal evil. The wickedness of human heart. Arm robbery. Now, when you go to sleep, there are other people who take their guns and knives and they go for duty. And they do all these things, they plan, and they think that this is what we want to do. Their heart is so wicked. And all these people are with us. It will be difficult for a generation to eliminate all of them. Ritual murder. Children killing children for money. All these things are there. They happen on this planet Earth. They happen in Ghana. They happen in Accra. And sometimes they happen even in schools. Social evil. Our social structure or our social structures that breeds evil, that incarnates sin, bribery and corruption, greed. One of my boys was just waiting for a certificate. Um, he got one, but the name was not spelled correctly. So he decided that he would turn it in so they can give him a new one. He needed it to um, fill a form for admission in a, in a school. He thought that he was going to have this under a month because it was said that when he filled the form, he was told that he was going to have this within two weeks. But he waited three months. He was not getting anything. So what he decided was this. That he would go to the place and then follow it up himself. So he went there. He sat there for about two hours. Nobody was attending to him. Then he gathered some courage and some boldness and went to one of the manager's office. Young man, what are you doing here? He says, I've come for this certificate. I've paid the money. I've waited for three months. I'm always being told that the machine that should fashion these certificates is broken down. So I came here to come and find out whether the machine is indeed spoiled. The man looked at him and he said, do you want your certificate? Are you serious? Then my boy said, yes. So, okay. Then you have to do something. Then this boy put his hand in his pocket trying to do something because he understood there's something. Just as he was pulling out the money, the man said, no, there are cameras here. Meet me outside. So he met him outside and he gave him just, just something small. Within an hour, the machine that has broken down for three months produce certificate from him. This is social evil. You have to pay for money for what belongs to you. Even your own check, you have to pay money for that. And this is social evil. And all of us are living in it. And sometimes you wonder whether to vote for your MP again or not to vote for the MP. And the one who is also waiting to occupy the seat can also not be trusted. Social evil. Social evil. Then, spiritual evil. <laughs> it, is, it is in the Quran that Satan is not present. His name is not there. But in the Bible, there is Satan. Now listen. I'm talking about the oppression of the demonic. It is real. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. Scripture says the average human being cannot stand the operations of evil and the demonic not at all. These are described as spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. 
spiritual evil. I have had a lot of opportunity to have encounters with people who are really devilish. And sometimes for them, they, they, their burden becomes so heavy that they want to run to you for deliverance. There's this woman that I saw walking like that. Sir, so so for, can you help me? I said, what? What can I do for you? And then she told me her story. You want me to give you the details? <laughs> I see that you have itchy ears. I will not tell you. But I was shocked with surprise. She has killed two of the sons. Her own children. Two of them. I was surprised. I looked at her face. Very good looking. But she is evil. Spiritual evil. Now, how do we deal with these compounds of limitation? We all, like King Solomon, wants to make meaning of life. We want to find ways of escaping these compounds of limitation. So, we try education. Many of us are here hoping that after school, we will be able to come out of some predicament. At least... We'll be able to have a vehicle and a house. But sometimes it does not just happen. People have completed school. They are still at home. Yes, they get so frustrated. And they realize that, why? After all, I thought I would go to the university and better my life. They still go through the, the university. And they still cannot have their ends meeting. Education. It is not the solution to human predicament. Not at all. Then others think that when I finish school and I get job, work. They work. And after about six months or two years, they see that they are not being promoted. Then they get frustrated. They fight the whole system until they are tired. They retire. Thinking that if they, I get to this job, this place will be better. They go there and it is worse. Now, they wonder whether they can apply to where they left. Work is not the solution. Marriage, let me marry. I'm sure that will give me some comfort. People enter into it, and that is not the solution to human predicament. Wealth and riches. So, people want to get money. They want to be rich fast. They think that money answers all questions. No, money does not. I know many a people who have money, yet they are so sick, there's nothing that they can do. See, in 1981, Bob Marley died. Those days, we were growing up in secondary school, and Bob Marley had taken the whole world. He has captured everywhere with his music. Then when he died, the whole world felt it. 36 years he was gone. But you see, he had all sorts of issues of cancers. Then when they operated him, he looked like somebody who was 20 years older than his age. He loved football. Now they just play football to him and he is not able to play back. So sick. Before the fame, the riches, it couldn't save him from dying. Not many years ago, one doctor died in a rich suburb in Accra. And then he left a note that I cannot reconcile with life. Then when they brought pictures of where he, he lived, it was a story building, very nice house. Two vehicles were standing on the compound. Those two vehicles belonged to him, yet he, can, he couldn't reconcile with life. What was bothering him? There are some limitations, and it is compounds of limitation. Money is not the solution. Some people try projects, and then, especially in our world today, people want pleasure. And so some people have decided that they will not even marry, or 
if they marry and in a week they see that there's so much tension they get out they don't want anybody to sit on their pleasure hedonism life of pleasure they want to be free but you see there is nowhere in this planet on this planet earth where there is freedom not even in the white house there is nowhere Sometimes when I'm reading the Bible and I see the word freedom, I underline it. Freedom, where? Where do you find freedom? Fame. But being popular will not get you out of these compounds of limitation. Social actions. Sometimes, show boy, let us get him off. When Nkrumah was killed, we thought that maybe the, the succeeding president will bring us relief. It, was, it never came until coups after coups. Social actions can help, but it doesn't get us out of these compounds of limitation. It doesn't mean that we will never suffer. We will be suffering in the midst of social actions and religion and rituals. Now, in our country today, we have a lot of ministers with all kinds of titles because in our country, you don't need anything to get any title. When you pick it and you wear it and it fits you, then that's all. Nobody questions you whether you are so so and so. Nobody cares. And all kinds of churches, all kinds of shrines, ministers with all kinds of titles and claims. To the extent that they will put their numbers out there and then they will tell you that when you come to me and you see me, this is last stop. All kinds of claims, yet they themselves, they are suffering. Aprons, oil, mantles is what churches are preaching about. And a good Sunday morning like this, go and visit some churches. The whole floor is filled with water from Jordan and anointing oils whilst the Bible is begging to be taught. Prophets. People line up and they think that when the prophet says that by tomorrow by this time you will be that and that, then that is the end of suffering. The next year comes. And the person sees that at the prophecy, maybe the man didn't see it right. Even if he saw it correctly, that is 2022. What about 2023? So prophetism is taking over the place of scripture. And this is dangerous for churches. And that is where people flock to. Because they don't want to suffer. They want some kind of escape. I, I think that, or I will not be surprised that some of us are sitting here with some anointing oils in our bags. Some of us, we have to put some, some kind of oil from a certain minister in the food we eat. Otherwise, we don't eat. Some of you have aprons. And some of you have special pomades from pastors, not from the shrine. And these things are taking over the name of Jesus. Yet, we are not coming out of these predicaments. And if this is the church that we are building today, then let me say that we are building a very poor church. But in the midst of all these limitations, there is an oasis of salvation. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has set eternity in human hearts. Yet, no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to the end. Now, let me just dwell in this scripture for a while. He has made everything beautiful in its time. This is from Solomon, the man who tried all sort of things. Yet, his conclusion is that everything is vanity. And then he says that in the midst of human predicament God has set eternity in their heart or God has set eternity in the midst of the earth yet human beings cannot see it 
And then he says that they cannot see what God has done from the beginning. And when we talk about eternity, eternity is life forevermore. And human beings, we are not made to live forever. So eternity is a foreign life. But the Bible says that it is in the midst of human beings. In the midst of these compounds of limitation, Ecclesiastes is teaching that God has set eternity in the hearts of men. Or life forevermore is in our midst. There is a way back to the Garden of Eden where we can access life and live forever. And God has taken the initiative to give us that life already. This eternity is found in only one man. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So eternal life is found in only one man. And Solomon is saying that in the midst of this earth, God has set eternity in the midst of us. And eternity, I said, is a foreign life. And that life is found in Jesus Christ. When you assess him, you access eternal life. This life or this eternal life guarantees our future. A future life in the new Jerusalem where there will be no suffering. Simon, when he picked Jesus up in his arms, says, Father, let me now depart in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation. So Jesus is God's salvation, God's way out of these compounds of limitation. Jesus is God's salvation. Accepting Jesus as Savior does not insulate you from suffering. But it is like an oasis in a desert. Peace in this dark world of sin. Let me repeat that. I went to the hospital the other time. I had some ache. In my knee. And then this doctor is as old as I am. And then he was trying to explain that what is causing the pain is because of age. Then I said, how old are you, doctor? And then when he mentioned his age, we were the same age. Then he says that, you see, human beings differ. Anyway, humans differ. But these are compounds of limitation. That is why that I don't claim to be Jesus. I don't make myself appear as if I have solutions to every man's problems. When I get to a bereaved house, I am a bit quiet. I don't rush to say anything because I don't have solutions. I also feel the pain. I also have aches in my knee. Sometimes I have aches at my back. We are all living in compounds of limitation. But you see, what I have is this. Because of Christ, it is like an oasis in a desert. And it assures me that one day, you will pick me out of these compounds of limitation and take me to eternity where there will be no suffering. Where there will be no suffering. Peter says that there is no salvation. There is no escape in any name. But there is only one name that is given among men. Whereby one will be saved. And he says the name is Jesus. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place. And gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. In heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of the Father. This name Jesus. The Bible says O Lord our God. How majestic is your name in all the earth, not some part of the earth. This name saves everyone in all the earth. And whoever calls upon this name of the Lord shall be saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. 
The Bible said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. He didn't say the Lord is a strong tower. No. The Lord, Jehovah, God, God the Father, Holy Spirit, they are not the strong towers, but the name of the Lord. See, the Lord is one, but the Lord, when he became human, he was given a name. And that name is the strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are saved. Today, as you listen to the sound of my voice, I want to give you an opportunity to come into this oasis of salvation. An opportunity to be saved. Because there is no way out of these compounds of limitations. No. Let me work hard. So that when I become maybe a, a doctor, I'll be free. When I have that title, let me work hard so that I become a professor. Let me work hard so that I become, we work hard and work hard and work hard until we work hard into death. Then into the grave all of us will go. There is no way out of, for deliverance except in the name Jesus. Now wherever you are seated, as you hear the sound of my voice, if you want to come into this oasis of salvation, into this great tower, I want to invite you. Come to Jesus. And you will never be the same again. You will smile in the midst of the storm. For in us, there is an oasis. It cools our pressure. Even though, so we, the Bible says, when you go through fire, the oasis is with you. I want you to, to come run to this oasis of salvation. To the Lord Jesus Christ. The day I gave my life to him up to today, I have never been the same again. He has changed my life. And I don't mind whether I, I am prosperous or poor. That does not come in at all. My satisfaction is that Jesus is my Lord. That is my satisfaction. Thanks for listening to today's word. Subscribe to our social media handles for life-transforming messages.